Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is the Tip Top Audio Z2040. Before we dive off into the actual review, I want to encourage everyone to stay on until the end of the video because I've got some great news to share. So I would say enjoy this video. And again, I want to thank Tip Top Audio for making this possible. Thanks again, guys. So here you have it, the Z2040, up close and personal. So we see that we've got five inputs and one output, and we've got five pot meters that we can, uh, that we can play with. Uh, but before we dive into the actual functionality, let's have a quick look and a quick listen at what we have here. So I'm gonna connect my output directly into the filter output, and I'm gonna connect a pulse wave generator to the input. So what we're gonna see on the right hand side, um, we're gonna have the spectrum analyzer at the top and the oscilloscope at the bottom. So I'm gonna be using these to explain a bit more about what this filter does and some of the, well, the basics there as well. So I'm gonna be using the wrong terms. I'm gonna be messing up here and there, but please help me to learn and please leave some comments um, below if, if I mess up somewhere, please do. So. I studied physics and astrophysics in university and one of the things I had to do was Fourier analysis which essentially means that any sort of wave shape that you have or any sort of shape can be expressed as a sum of, uh, of sine waves and that's essentially what we see here as well so this pulse wave the, 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 well, the cubes that we see there those are of course expressible as being the sum of a collection of sine waves all with their own values and their own weights and if you know exactly how you should do that then you've done Fourier analysis so if we then look at the spectrum analyzer you see exactly what I mean because you see all of these frequencies and those can then indeed correlate to those sine waves we talked about and if you were to sum all of these up with the weights that they have you would get that pulse wave there as well. So if you take that C3 as the most important wave and then you take your C4 a bit lower and then you have a bit more of the G4 and if you combine all of those together you would get the exact pulse wave that we see here. Well, okay, this is not a mathematics lesson. This is gonna be a in-depth look at the Z2040, right? So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna just move this a bit further down is we're gonna have a look at the actual cutoff frequency so and what it actually does. So if, if I turn this knob and lower the cutoff frequency, you see that we lose a lot of the, well, the higher regiment no, uh, tones there. Uh, all the way down, and we can actually go all the way down that we even lose our, well, our base note, so to say. And this is something that you can really play with. So you can use this then to create a a slight vibrato that you can incorporate into your drones or you can make it a bit more erratic and you can have something that already adds some dynamic to your uh, to your sound but again you see me working this knob by hand and that's of course something that we don't want to do in the modular world we want to have CV take care of that for us so what I'm going to grab I'm going to grab one of my trusty LFOs and I'm going to connect that to the frequency mod modulation for the cutoff frequency. So let me open up this attenuator a bit and you're gonna see the cutoff frequency go from right to left and back again. So I can go all the way up here. You can see that it gets pretty erratic. So again, we can do the slight vibrato for the, uh, for the drone or we can do the bit more dynamic rhythm there as well. We can even increase the LFO rate if we want. Whatever we want to do. But we can also make this a bit more erratic. Or indeed play with that. But then we have the voltage control for this for this button as well, for this knob. So if I then grab another LFO, let me just grab that real quickly and connected to that, you'll start to see that 
the other LFO, which is a sign LFO, is going to make it a bit more as well. So let me just open up that offset and you're going to see that it's either very small or very erratic. So now it's erratic and now it's slowing down a bit and there you have it. So you can play with this as much as you want. So let's turn this down for now and let's talk about resonance. So I'm going to open this up again and I'm going to open up the resonance. So what you're going to see is that around the cutoff frequency, and I'm doing this by hand now, you start to see that we increase the volume at around that point. So if I turn it even higher up, there you see that we get another peak on the spectrum analyzer. This adds so much color to the sound that you have. If we then indeed grab the dynamics into that, there you have it. Grab the other one there as well. It adds so much dynamics to that sound. You can do so many things with this. So that's really nice. And what we can then also do is add another value to the actual resonance value. So I'm just going to grab my sample and hold. So my sample and hold is fed by noise. So it's going to have a random value all the time. And what my sample and hold then does, is it's at a certain time point, it takes a sample, takes a snapshot of that value, and it then holds that until another time frame comes along. And that can, of course, be influenced by an LFO or any other clock. So I'm just going to put it in there and make sure that we have a nice rate going. And you see the resonance going up and down there based on my sample and hold value. Let me just turn the frequency down a bit. So if we then open these up as well, we're going to get something that has very random behavior but makes it very musical because we're still in the same tone. So that's really nice. So now what we then still have is the VC gain for the VCA. So the fun thing about the VCA is that you can configure that to be either on the input or on the output. And I've got it in its default configuration, so it's on the output, but I can just change a jumper on the back side of the, of the module and it's gonna be a VCA for the input. So what I will do is I'll grab my envelope generator. Here we go. And we're gonna get an envelope going. Let me turn this down. And let's turn the decay down and the attack down. And so we only have sustain. And we can just play with our envelopes a bit. Make it a bit richer. to add some additional resonance to it. Here we go. <laughs> so we have something that adds rhythm to it. We have something that plays with the frequency. We have something that plays with the, well, let's call it the amplitude of the frequency modulation of the color frequency. We have resonance that's dynamic. So we have a full VC control over all of the parameters for this, for this filter. And I think that this is an absolute must have if you're starting off with, uh, with Eurorack and you want to have a, a, a very reliable a low pass filter uh, that you can do anything with, with that you want. I love this thing to death, absolutely. And I haven't even talked about one of its coolest features. So let's uh, disconnect all of this. You might have heard this, but this filter actually self oscillates. So what that means that even if we don't put any input in there, but if we turn the resonance up high enough, that this filter will indeed behave like an oscillator itself with a very pure sine wave, as you can see. And we can just 
move this along by moving the frequency along. Well, that sounds familiar, right? So if we connect something to the FM, let's say my, uh, my keyboard CV, we can actually play this filter. Here we go. As you hear, you need to calibrate it a bit, but you can easily do that. So we have an extra oscillator. So if you ever need an additional oscillator or you're one oscillator short, but you do have an unused filter on your machine and that filter does self oscillate. Here you go. I thought that was very cool because I've never seen that before. I really love this beautiful thing to pieces. So back from that review, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And to be quite honest, I'm learning so much by just doing these reviews and I hope to get as much feedback on this one as I got from the previous ones. I do enjoy making them. I enjoy interacting with the rest of the community. So I hope you guys will join me every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Uh, Central European time on Clubhouse. If you're not on Clubhouse and you need an invite, just ping me. Um, we are meeting up there with people from the industry, people from the community, and hopefully everyone back home there as well. So I did promise you some good news. So we are partnering with Strymon, who are sponsoring a giveaway that we're going to be talking about in our next video. My next video will be focused on the Nano Modules Honor. So that's going to be a great one to look forward to. So if you want to have a chance to, to win some Strymon goodies, tune in for the next one. For now, I would say stay safe, stay healthy. Cheers.